sand and then finish sand. I want to get these done today, if at all possible. Um, it is almost 11 and I figured for uh, comparison's sake, I have three Metabol HPT handheld sanders, two are five inch ROS's and one's a quarter sheet sander. Just purely out of curiosity's sake, I want to see how long it takes for each sander uh, to sand these completely flat and take these ridges off from the electric hand plane. Um, I have a feeling the corded ROS is going to be king. I think it's got a slightly wider stroke length than this cordless does. Everything's going to be running at max speed. Everything's going to be running with the same exact sandpaper, that 60 degree Diablo. Yeah, I'm going to throw you guys on time lapse and I'm going to mark down what times I start and stop. Because I am curious, I want to see which of these is the fastest, so let me go ahead and light some incense. I need to check what sandpaper is on these two, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, that's all three sanders, and uh, I don't think I clarified. Okay, so this is the 18 volt cordless SV1813DA. This is a pretty new sander of the lineup. These two are actually, I'm pretty sure, old Hitachi designs back when they went by Hitachi. This is the SV13YST. Uh, what's the amperage on this? Well, that's a 2.8. I'm thinking of big 6 inch sanders. If this was a big 6 inch sander, it would be like a 6 amp. <laughs> like a direct drive deal. Those suckers scream. And this is the SV12SG. It's a 1.7 amp. Um, so there's a caveat with this. I'm actually going to do another run with this sander with fresh paper because it took considerably longer than the other two. Like there's no way a corded quarter sheet should take less time than even a cordless 5 inch. So here's the order. We have our 5 inch cordless, our quarter sheet, and our 5 inch corded. So. I actually wrote 10 for some reason, even though it was 
Um, can I do this in my head? That's 28 minutes. The quarter sheet took. Uh, I can do this, I promise. 17 minutes. And this took 10 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and write that down. So we got 10, 17, and 28. I'm going to throw fresh paper on the cordless and do another run, let you guys know. But something really interesting, the quarter sheet actually does not take much longer than the corded 5 inch, and it actually took less time than the cordless. But like I said, there's a caveat with that. Let's go ahead and throw fresh paper on that. And uh, something a lot of people don't realize about the Metabo HBT batteries. The, uh, I actually learned this through either a sales rep or a flyer, or maybe my Metabo rep. Uh, at 36 volts, this battery will output about 1,080 watts. These, uh, that's the 2.5 amp hour slash 5 amp hour. These 4 slash 8, it's the big boys, these will do 1,440 watts plus. And I'm not sure what the 18 volt... I know this outputs more power than the older version. Oh, battery's done. Uh, if I had to guess, using my hand dyno, if that makes any sense. It sounds weird, but I'm guessing this is like 700, 750. This might be 100 watts more, so like 800, 850 watts. There is a noticeable... Uh, you can tell the motor runs faster in the sander with one of these batteries versus one of these. And even that battery versus one of these 18 volt. So uh, I'm actually going to throw the biggest battery I got. I've got two of them, but one of these two on the cordless sander with fresh paper and we'll do another comparison. Also, I just got uh, the payment for an order of 3328, that's three and a quarter inch colonial. It'll be inch and a quarter thick. It's kind of weird stuff, but finally going to run uh, molding. It's 35 pieces at eight foot long each. So like 280 linear foot. So they'll all have back outs or back relief cuts and they'll all be primed. And the customer is going to pick them up, so I don't even have to go deliver it. So about time this thing finally made me some money again. A thousand percent was some old paper so we've got our new time down here the bottom one 1219 to 1237 that's about 18 minutes um, still a minute slower than the quarter sheet but the quarter sheet the piece the quarter sheet did had uh, some shallower cuts that it needed to level out and in comparing this sander to this sander this sander has uh, a little bit shorter stroke length or orbit radius whatever you want to call it aka the distance it goes when it makes a circle is a little bit less than this one so this is a more powerful sander it also runs at a slightly higher RPM than this one does <clears throat> but it's kind of shocking how close all of these are especially the quarter sheet compared to the uh, cordless ROS. I would have expected even this to destroy that, but it just honestly shows how good that sander is. If you guys don't have a quarter sheet sander, you really need one because they are awesome. Is it a full-on replacement for an ROS? No. But it, it can do things that these two can't. 
<clears throat> and it does better in certain situations, especially sanding edges. You don't end up with a rounded edge with a quarter sheet sander like you would in ROS if you weren't being careful. But the ROS has a steeper learning curve. Um, if you don't know what you're doing with a, a quarter sheet, you can leave some pretty nasty swirl marks and lines. I believe this... Is it this one or is it the other side? It might be the other side. You know what? I can't tell and that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely this side. This side had... Uh, I don't know if you can see that. When you get to the edges uh, with the lower grits you end up with some pretty nasty swirl marks. It does get better as you go higher up in the grits. Like if you get to 150 or 220 um, you can't even see that but it does make you some more work when we have to go up to our next grit. So that is something to keep in mind. <clears throat> I might actually just make this its own video. Uh, speaking of which, situation update, yes I did get paid and some new things are going to be coming to the shop as a result. I'm going to grab a 24 tooth Diablo for this thing because I do want a faster ripping blade for the pine that I'm going to be running through this. I may also grab a general purpose, a pretty coarse tooth uh, Diablo blade for this thing. Uh, there's a router bit or two I need to grab, like I need a Diablo half inch, like a mortising bit for the trailer. Uh, I need a red chalk line, I need a new tape measure, and there's just some random stuff. There's some uh, consumables I need to replace, like I noticed my quarter sheet sanding supplies are getting pretty low. I think there's a sanding belt grit that I need to get for this 3x21 here. I use this pretty frequently for big panel glue ups especially. Not so much for little stuff like this. I think I would do more harm than good trying to use that on these little guys but for a big panel glue up that thing is indispensable. Like that belt sander would take care of this in a fifth of the time of any of these sanders. So for this rough work it is absolutely indispensable. I think it's 36 grit I'm low on. I think I only have one of those, and that's an older one, so, yeah. Fluff and I were kind of kicking around the idea of potentially doing um, pine floors in the living room and the kitchen of the trailer, so that might be a thing. If we do that, I'll end up getting a flooring stapler, which should be fun. Um, but... If we do that, we're not going to rent one of the big uh, floor sanders. It would just gum it up anyways. I'm just going to use this thing with a vacuum. Because it's, it's pine. It'll take half an afternoon, if that. It's like... <sighs> that room, and I think the other stuff he wants to do, but... That room in itself is like 360 some odd square foot and the rest that he wants to do is about the same amount so it's like 700 square foot of pine flooring. So it would hardly take any time at all. I don't think we'd do it out of eastern white pine. I think we'd probably do it out of yellow pine because in my opinion it looks better and it's also a more durable pine. Anyways. I got one more of these to do, and then I think I have to cut these to rough size, and then it's time for 150, 220, and then 320. And then somewhere in there, there needs to be a round over for the edges. I need to put feet on these so they don't slide all over your countertop. I might probably will laser engrave the back of these. I'm not sure yet. And then it's time for finish and they'll be uh, ready to go up on the website. And then I can get started on some other things I have planned for the website. 
I didn't intend to make a standalone video today, but yeah, I guess that's what I'm doing. Cool little comparison between the three uh, handheld sanders. Now, Metabo HPT, if you're watching this, which I don't think you're watching it this far in the video, but if you are, please, for the love of God, make a six inch direct drive sander. I am begging you. Begging you, because only German Metabo and Makita make one that I would actually buy. You guys don't make any 6-inch sanders at all. And also, please make a 4x24 belt sander. Nobody uses 3x21s anymore. I mean, I'm not going to buy any other belt sander, but still, please make a 4x24. Let's knock this other one out. I'm not going to include that in this video, but I'm going to use that sander, that cordless. Let's get it. Oh, getting paid feels so good, man. finished uh, 100 grit sanding and uh, before we go any further with sanding we still have 150, 220, and 320 to do. There's some pretty obvious things that we need to do to these cutting boards because right now they don't really look like cutting boards. And namely that would be, and look at that, I think they look great. This one's upside down. There we go. This one's also upside down. But they need to be cut to length. They're already cut to width. Uh, but they need to be cut to length. I need to radius the corners on these so it's not such a hard uh, rectangle shape. And I also need to put a round over on each edge. So let's go ahead and do that.
That's what your miter saw should sound like. Stop doing this crap. It's a 15 amp tool. Use it. If you're not getting good enough cut quality, buy a better blade. Beautiful cut quality. I need to cut a little more of that off. There's a defect in the end of that. Anyways, going back to that hole, you see a lot of woodworkers, they'll take a, a shallow pass with the miter saw, another shallow pass, another shallow pass, and then they'll finally cut through it. That is a valid technique for a certain situation. That's if you're cutting rough lumber, and there's a lot of tension built up in the wood and it hasn't gone through a planer yet. That is not how you get a finished quality cut on the edge. Can you tell I'm passionate about this? See, there's a lot of people doing stuff on uh, Instagram and YouTube and they don't really understand what they're doing. Or why they're doing it. A lot of other techniques I should go over. Things I see done incorrectly all the time. Now this is the one, yeah, that's the one. There's a crack in the corner of this one that I didn't catch before glue up. But the finished length of these is supposed to be 13 inches, so we're just gonna cut it off. Well, for this size anyways. You want to be real careful when you're doing this because you can cut wood off, you can't put it back on for the most part. And I'm actually going to save what I cut off of here. I've seen Chris DeVone, DeVoe do it. Uh, he saves it as like a pattern reference. So I will label each of these what um, cutting boards are actually supposed to be. That way, for future reference, I don't always have to look at the computer. It's much quicker to just grab this out of a drawer and go. Now these little guys are supposed to be 10 and 3 quarter. These are prep boards. They're meant for, let's say, cutting French onions or Dicing a tomato, small stuff like that. Okay, so I've made all of my marks. Let's go ahead and cut them. And I'll radius some corners. See how it stayed pretty much the same RPM throughout? That's what you want. Consistency. That's how you get good, quality, good cut quality. Not taking little passes. That little, taking little passes that's meant for breaking down rough lumber so you don't have a kickback. When you're working with finished lumber like this, you don't have to worry about that because everything's been jointed and plain true.